The movie opens up with Gang Ling Chen having a pissing contest with a supposed master of martial arts. Arguing between the speed of a head versus hand, it's implied that Gang just defeated this master, and in spite, the master challenges him to a rematch right there and then in the coffee shop. The two fight and Gen comes out victorious. Accompanied by the master is this woman, that we'll get to know as the Widow. She's the head of one of the schools and comes into play later in the story. So flashback to a temple of martial arts. We're introduced to Chen Shi, the master. He uses a fighting style native to South China called Wing Chun. And as a show of power, he easily defeats four guards single-handedly, which impresses Grandmaster Zheng Shanao. It's Chen's intention to teach Wing Chun at Zheng's school. Zheng needs some time to contemplate the situation, and the two attend a ball, where they watch in the marvel of the dancers. Zheng considers the dancers to be borderline martial artists in their own right. While he does have a love for the Western ways, he fears the old ways are going to be lost. And to prevent this, he agrees to let Chen open up a school of martial arts. In exchange, he wants to retire from his position as Grand Master. So after Chen thinks it over for a night, he agrees to the deal in the morning. There's a catch, however. In order to open up his own school, he has to defeat eight masters from eight different schools. Nobody has ever defeated more than five, so it seems ridiculous to the Zhang. Now, in order to prove his determination, Zhang makes him eat eight loaves of bread. A strange parallel to fighting Kung Fu masters, but nonetheless, he overloads on the carbs to the point of gagging. Now, this show of faith is enough to convince Zhang of Chen's determination. Unfortunately, to challenge the eight masters, Chen himself cannot be the one to fight. Rather, he needs to be an apprentice. Now, to train an apprentice will take a considerable amount of time. So, to prevent suspicion from the other schools, he needs a cover. He chooses a sassy waitress to be his wife, Zhao. One super abrupt marriage later, and they're living in the slums together, trying to lay low. Some time passes by, and they've settled into their lives quite nicely. A street fight gets the attention of Gang Ling Chen from the beginning of the movie. He challenges Chen directly, and gets a quick slice of humble pie. The fight shows the potential of Gang and Chen quickly takes him under his wing as the apprentice that he was looking for. Despite Gang's gazes at his wife, Chen knows that he'll put the fear of God in him when training starts. So the next day, Chen tells Zhang about his new apprentice. This is when Zhang decides to enlighten Chen about the rules of the challenge. Also note that there's a student of Zhang training during the meeting. That guy is Officer Lin. He's a military dude that's been training under Zhang for a long time, so he comes into play later. Now, the rules of the challenge state that after the apprentice defeats eight of the champions, he must fight one final master that all schools take a vote on. After that, the apprentice is banished, never to be seen again. Unaware of this rule, Chen hesitates to train Gang. Zhang, however, already has an apprentice in mind. Himself. He wants one last great victory before he retires, and is willing to disappear into a quiet life after it's all done. They plan to train Gang, have him win the challenges, and then face off against Master Zhang. This way, Wing Chun gets all the fame it deserves, and Zhang can disappear. However, so would Gang. They agree on their scheme, and Zhang agrees to call Chen his equal, and together they begin training. With the advanced skills of Master Zhang, the plan for opening up their school has been expedited, and this excites Chen. He takes out his excitement on his wife, if you know what I mean. Elsewhere, now as a student of Chen, Gang has opened up a book stand. He gets mugged by his former co-workers and breaks the unspoken rule of no knives in a street fight. Clearly still being untrained at this point in his life, he gets beaten up pretty badly. It's only by the efforts of a tea girl that the bleeding stops, and Gang doesn't die of his wounds. One year later, Gang is in his first test of mastery against another student, and wins the match. As a reward, they treat him out to dinner. As far as Chen and Zhao, Zhao grows more anxious about being left behind when Chen eventually leaves to open up his own school. The anxiety of being left behind brings up some past trauma for Zhao. At one point in her life, she had a baby with another non-Chinese man, and the baby was sold away. With the impending journey, she feels like she's losing her family again. 
She runs off and gets her purse stolen by some rogues in the street. And she's almost attacked, but Chen saves her just in time. He single-handedly defeats an onslaught of thugs, all while comforting his wife. Chen reassures her that they can find the lost child. He empathizes with her and tells her that he'll be back for her. In an acute, quirky way, they agree to start a proper family after he returns and promises to stay loyal to one another in his absence. And this is all happening while he's effortlessly kicking some <laughs> So when they return home, Gang is there and looking to celebrate his first victory with the couple. He brings them crab and they feast together. The relationship between Gang and Chen's family has only developed during the time they have been together. Gang views them as a family now. And at dinner, he mentions the pretty tea girl that he's been flirting with off and on. And the next day, Zhao checks her out herself. I suppose the idea of a pretty new girl makes her uncomfortable. So elsewhere, Zhang and Chen are sparring, and Master Zhang overpowers Chen. The sparring match gets a little too intense, and Zhang slightly stabs Chen in the process. At Gang's next match, he dominates the competition, earning his second victory. Having proved himself... Chen tells Gang that the future of Wing Chun is in his hands. The dangerous challenge worries his girlfriend, but he seems determined to continue. So some time passes, and one day, a group of Chinese mobsters comes to Chen and Zhao's home. It's the widow, the woman from the beginning of the movie. Now that Gang has defeated seven champions, he's on the verge of completing the challenge, and the prospect of opening a new school threatens them. They take his word for now, but after they leave, Zhao realizes that their marriage is just a front to cover up the fact that he's opening a school. This breaks their relationship and she leaves him. The stress of his wife leaving and Gang surpassing him in skills throws him into a depression. So later that night, Zhao tries to warn Gang, but he thinks she's worried about someone cheating him during one of the challenges. The exponential growth of his skills makes Gang overconfident and he begins to take it out on random, everyday people. He starts a fight with a customer at his girlfriend's tea cart, and she scolds him vigorously for being a bully. In the aftermath of the fallout between him and the tea girl, he challenges the 8th school. Now, the school is run by the same woman that raided Chen's house before, and as it turns out, her late husband was the original master of push knives, the technique that Chen and Zhang have been training on for the past year. She accepts Gang's challenge, and the stage for the final champion's fight begins. It can be assumed that he wins because the fight happens off screen, and he's taken out for coffee, thus leading to the scene at the beginning of the movie. With how fast the country is progressing into western ways, even the old masters view the military as the future. A lot of kung fu politics are involved, and an apprentice of Zhang overthrows him in a sparring match. The loss causes a small mental break, and he deems himself unworthy of being the final champion to fight Gang. So when Chen goes to visit him the following day, he's turned away. And that's enough for Chen to realize that Zhang intends to break his promise and most likely try to cripple Gang as a show of power. He turns to Zhao for help, and she agrees to help get Gang out of town. It's too late, however. A gang of trained fighters ambushes Gang on the streets. They seem to have him outnumbered and overpowered at first. But he actually manages to defeat him with relative ease before he's defeated by two strangers that were originally spying on him. They stab him with two daggers and haul him off. Gang's whisked away in a cart, and Chen is forced to watch helplessly from a distance. With his apprentice in danger, Chen confronts Zhang about his betrayal. Although all he finds is a broken man preparing to leave the country. In preparation for his exile, he leaves Chen with hundreds of sparring gear for his new school. Quick recap. Because Gang was able to defeat the schools, he's been banished. Hence the mob of assassins. The defeat that Zhang faced by his former apprentice had lost him the title of master, thus making his apprentice the new champion. This apprentice uses his newfound power to banish Gang. Now the rules of the banishment are unclear, but they take Gang who's still alive, far out to the edge of the city and have him leave, never to return. The two daggers are still lodged in him, and if he moves too fast, he'll cut up his insides. So Gang's left alone in a field, and despite his wounds, he tries to run after the car and passes out from the loss of blood. Now back in town, Chen is seeing Zhang off, and is surprised when he finds one of the dancers that they always watched accompanying him. She's his wife now. Despite being a clear gold digger, Zhang chooses to stay with her. Miraculously, Gang makes it back into town, but eventually succumbs to his wounds. 
the opening of the new school is a bittersweet feeling for Chen. In his anger, he destroys the training facility he built for Gang. His new school is in the center of town and seems to be a promising lucrative business and the other schools have already honored him with a hotel room and a life of luxury. So the next day, in his misery, Gang's co-workers come to visit him and deliver the news of his death. They want vengeance and despite Chen's anger, he knows they'll never be able to keep up with real fighters. He sends them away knowing with the opening of his new school, he'll garner power comparable to the other heads of the school. In a sense, he can be a new sense of authority around the city. This also means he's tied into politics of the different schools, and he can't leave his position unattended. Now that he has everything he ever wanted, he tells Zoa that she may leave to return to her home and wait for the long-lost son to find her. With his newfound wealth, he checks up on the tea girl, and she tells him about the death of her boyfriend, Gang. She remains unaware that Chen is Gang's master and asks him to take vengeance on Gang's killers. Later at the banquet for the opening of his new school, they show the recording of Master Zeng's defeat. The proof of his defeat makes Officer Lin the new Grandmaster. The humiliation of his friend and the death of his apprentice drives Chen to the edge, and he cuts down the film and issues a challenge to all the remaining schools. The outburst shocks everyone, and in his rage, he stabs the widow of the push knife school. She convinces him to stand down, and he surprisingly obliges without much fight. Outside of the theater, where Chen watches a film with the other masters of the school, Zoa waits terrified for him. In mid-movie, Chen is tackled and snuck a knife. He uses it to kill Officer Lin, and everyone's grateful for it. The plot only got thicker and more convoluted. The new head of the organization falls upon the widow who only seeks to avenge the death of her husband, Zhang's predecessor. She orders Chun killed, but upon his final request, he wants to fight everyone with the armor that Zhang left behind. She agrees, and in the midst of everyone preparing, Chun bolts for the door. He escapes into the streets and tries to disappear while everyone chases him. Zoa tries to chase after him, but he loses even her. The entire city becomes a battleground for Chen and the soldiers. Eventually, he's cornered in an alley between some champions of the other schools. As his last stand, one by one he fights off the champions. Each specializes in its own art forms. With each new champion defeated, he inches his way further and further towards the exit of the city. Some of the final champions come riding in on bikes, like an RPG's final boss. He manages to beat the first guy with relative ease. Now the next guy's a little more experienced, but he does defeat him and takes his weapons from him. He uses the new curved blades to disarm the final masters, who originally beat him in the theater. Despite how well they parry the blades, he manages to defeat them this time around. With the masters of the school defeated, the widow barely puts up a fight, and Chen disappears into the city. He makes his way to the train station where Zoa was supposed to be waiting for him, but she's not there. She's still trying to catch up to him. And when she never shows up, he assumes that she left without him. Zoa doesn't arrive on time and Chen leaves without her. And the widow and her gang catch up to Zoa and threaten that the two of them should stay away and never come back. Zoa gets a train ticket with the intent to rendezvous with her husband. It's assumed that the two of them go on to live a quiet life away from the city, never to come back. Thus, the style of Wing Chun is lost with Chen. Did you get all that? I know there was